the goddess Kensembai. From the clan of the birds of paradise. The goddess Kensembai had flown to her earthly garden to bathe in the warm waters of the Zama River before flying home to Kandambo for the evening. Know that her thoughts went back to her mating night, the night that Zambi had gifted her with the sun guy and all the living creatures whose souls belong to Yah. When Zambi had spoken, of the creatures called mankind, know that she was most intrigued. Heart of my heart, will you fly me below the clouds so that I may see those whose souls belong to Yah? What say you? My love, know that I will. Zombie, zombie, do you not see? They are as Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In the book of Yah, all those who dwell above the clouds will be forbidden to come here. You gave a sun god to me. I do not have to share it if I do not wish to. Heart of my heart, I tell you truth, can Simbai cooled most passionately. Know that I will cherish them unto eternity. Know that the eagle island, a bird of paradise, spent their mating night roosting in one of the humongous palm trees that surrounded the lagoon in a nest filled with the soft feathers of Sister Emu, sipping on sweet grape wine while watching those below who went about their daily lives on the Alazama. The two love birds were soon joined by the moon goddess Lunas who lit up the midnight sky with the moonshine and the stars that followed her everywhere she flew. A meaning gift she cooed to the two with wistful thoughts of love. While below, the crowd warriors ran from hut to hut, screaming at the top of her lungs with excitement. Wake up! Wake up! The sky is on fire. Come see, come see, come see the magic of the gods. Mankind helped the old ones who needed a strong arm to lean on to walk and carried the ones who could not to the magical show of the gods where they gently placed them against smooth trunks of palm trees so they could rest their backs if need be. Who were soon joined by their mates with their sleepy kid wrapped in warm blankets were all set down on the warm sand and gazed in awe at the hazy midnight blue sky shimmering with lights of red, yellow, violet, and orange with thousands of stars that glittered and glowed and burst into trinely droplets of silver and gold. Ancient one, hollered the warrior Michael. Come sit before the fire and rest your back against the tree of honor whilst we watch the magic of the gods so that you will have much to say to those yet to be birthed of the magic we have seen this night with our own eyes. The Goddess and the Mambo. The sun god Ra had just closed his eyes when Kensembai spied the Alazama in the beautiful lagoon hidden in a coral gulf. It was even more beautiful than she remembered. She spread her glorious yellow wings wide and soared back and forth across the cloudless blue sky several times before she dove into the placid waters and came up shuddering. Ooh, she shivered and chirped with outrage. She hated getting her tail feathers wet. 
Just as soon as Kinsemba had finished preening and drying her feathers in the warm summer breeze and was about to take flight, she heard the soft giggling of the creatures she called Sisters of E. Soon the giggling turned to singing voices. Mambo-loki, Mambo-loki, going to the river, going for a swim. Mambo-loki, Mambo-loki, don't you see that crocodile? Hiding in the reeds, Mambo-lucky, Mambo-lucky, Brother Crocodile is waiting for you, Waiting to eat you. Swim, Mama Loki, swim, Mama Loki, swim. Kinsemi quickly took form as a sister V. It's not to frighten the creatures to death, if they saw her as Kandaki Kinsembe from the clan of the birds of paradise, her crown of yellow feathers were no more. She stood before the two with a mane of hair that had been bleached golden from raw scorching rays to hues of yellow, orange, and brown that covered her woman's breast in her shame. Mambo Kutula and her girl kid Christina, who had just turned five seasons, stared at the beautiful woman with skin the color of golden honey, at her heart-shaped face, and her small chiseled nose, at her thick bow-shaped lips, and her deep blue eyes, and both began to weep at the sight. So beautiful was she, wide brown eyes, Met deep blue eyes. Who was she? Not such as she dwelt on the yellow Zama. What clan did she come from? Know that in the deep blue depths, that Mamba Kutula saw Kinsembi as her true self. Feathers? Feathers, talons and claws, wings, wings, a giant bird woman, no, was she make believe, no, no, she could not be, surely an evil poker was living inside of her head. Ayy, ayy. Mabakutua broke from the spell and began to moan and groan. She quickly dropped her healing basket and put her girl, Christina, close to her heaving woman's breast and began running for her life. Screaming and hollering at the top of her lungs. Ayy, ayy. Save us! I beg you most pitifully! While Christina timidly waved at the bird woman with the big brown eyes of Sister Cliff Springer's own cat. Kinsibi smiled at the frightened girl cat as she took the fear from her heart with one swipe of her bejeweled claw. When Mamba Katula emerged from the clearing of the palm trees, screaming with fright, a few of the crowd warriors swiftly ran towards the two with spears held high. As they searched the lagoon for the beast that rode Mano Katula's backside, Kensimi knew that they would speak of what they had seen. It would most likely be stoned to death for not speaking truth and for seeing magic. Which can only mean one thing. That an evil booker is living inside of your head. No! 
I mean, the goddesses forbid. She would not let them be punished for what she had done. With a quickness, can Simbi pluck the feather from one of her wings and laid it in the sand besides her claw prints? Mankind was fearful and very suspicious of what they had not seen with their own eyes, without proof. Now an owl on the owl would know that the sister of Eve spoke truth. The proof lay on the sand, where for surety it would be found. It was at that moment in time that Kasimba knew for surety in her heart that she would not be able to keep her patch to herself forever. The day would come when those who dwell above the clouds would come to the sun god. And there was not that she could do. Mayhap yes. Mayhap no. She may not be able to stop those who dwell above the clouds from flying to the sun sky, but mayhap she could keep those who dwell below the clouds from bringing stone to death by mankind just for seeing them. Then somebody now knew what she must do. From this day forward, whenever one of the creatures laid eyes on the goddess or God, they would be marked. None would dare to question what the gods had chosen to do, as none of the gods would dare to question what she did or did not do with her own garden. When the sister of Eve say her name, all would see truth in her eyes as well as her girl kid until the day their souls no longer walk the path of life. Know that Mamos Couture's Ken and Keith waited most anxiously for the crowd roars to return to them, praying that something, anything be found to prove that what she'd spoken was not make-believe. They did not want her to be stoned to death. For telling tales. When the warrior Kifar appeared before them waving a long yellow feather high above his black woolly dreads. Know that they have wept with joy. Aye, aye. Come see, come see, come see what the gods of Kandambo have left in the sand. Know that Mambo Kutsara speaks truth. Sister Marianne, hollered Kefar with awe. Which one of the gods did you see? He smiled, showing all his white teeth, as he laid the feather at the freshly washed feet of the ancient one. Bambo Kotura, he hollered for all to hear. I beg you, most pitifully, will you tell us of the god you have seen? What say you? Know that I will. I saw not a god. Mambo Couture whispered. And all her kin and Keith leaned in. Closer. What say you? What say you? Shh. Shh. Hollered the ancient one. As she waved her wrinkled brown hands up and down. And glared most viciously. At the ones who dared to raise their eyebrows as they glanced towards her. If it's to say, do not shush me. You are not ma'am of me. Let Mambo Katura have her ears. Shh, shh. I say I saw a goddess. No! Hollered the ancient one. Ancient one, I tell you true. I have never seen such loveliness. I could not stop the tears. They fell from my eyes. Ay, ay, ay. 
No, I do not know what I saw. Mabel told cry as she held Tristina even tighter. It could not be so. She came most pitifully. The Bejigers flew into my set belly so quick. It's a wonder that I held my pee. I could not stop to feel the grip in my heart. I still shake with fright for Christine in me. See, sister, my, my skin is as bumpy as Sister Goose is. Oh, oh, sister of mine. Could marry him. Know that I will fetch you a bowl of banana wine and a wool blanket, even though I know you shake with fright and not from the chill of the night. Come, Christina. Mary, I'm cool. As she stared into the wide brown eyes of Sister Rabbit. What say you, sister of my ma'am? Whispered Christina. I say you're kin. How's your name? Who make you a warm cup of lavender tea and honey? The tea will make you have sweet dreams. Know that you may sleep in my hut this night. With your backside against the fire. Mabu Couture smiled. At Kifar as he stoked the low burning embers. Mabu Couture. Now that all ears belong to you once again. Will you finish your tale? What say you? Sister of mine. Hollered Marianne, know that you must keep your tongue behind your teeth until I return. How's your name? How's your name? Get from my own loins. Hollered Marianne, come take your little kin to our hut. Know there are coconut cakes that you may eat. You must make the lavender tea. Be very careful when you take the pie from the fire. Go, go. I do not wish to miss a word. My sister will say to all. Mary Ann, whispered Mama Couture as she slipped the warm spicy banana wine. Know that she was a bird woman as big as you and me. Hi, what say you? I say I speak truth. Mary Ann, know that she spoke to me inside of my head. No, yes, what say she? What say she? She say to me. Know that I am the goddess can send by. Aye, screamed Marianne as the ivory tea bowl she held fell from her trembling brown hands. Some of the droplets of banana wine flew into the now smoking embers, causing them to sigil to life. As the dancing blue and orange flames began to grow with an eerie glow, a shapely shadow of a woman with wings held high appeared as quickly as it disappeared, only to be seen by Marianne, who would never tell what she thought she had seen. It was not worth it. Kifar could not find a thought in a pile of ashes to prove to all what she had seen. No, she did not want to be stoned to death. She would keep her thoughts to herself. For surety, she knew what she had seen had not been my belief. And when she saw Kutula's pale face, she knew then that she had seen truth. Aye, aye, Kutula, Kutula, your eyes, your eyes. What say you, Miriam? What say you? I see your eyes. Are the color of the violets to grow amongst the moss. It is a sign from the goddess Kensembai. Hurry, sister of mine, she cried with fright as she made the sign of the holy cross. We must go to my hut at once. Christina, Christina. Christina finally awoke from her street dreams. 
at the sound of her ma'am's loud cleaning, and she slowly wiped the sleep from her violet eyes. And Mabel Katula fainted dead away. <laughs>